Welcome once again to Minds. This is part two of the video you probably saw a couple of weeks ago. But now we're here to take a closer look to a very special car that's built uh, in collaboration with Minds. It's the Built by Legends R33. So the car is sitting inside the shop. We're just gonna do a quick uh, run through of what this car consists of with the guys from BBL. And then we'll take out the car for a drive so you guys can kind of understand what goes into builds like this. So. A little longer than a few minutes later. So here it is. A very dramatic intro to the car. And uh, I think before we take it out, we should uh, talk to Masa-san from BBL just to get a, a, a rundown of what has gone into the process of creating a very bespoke build like this. So uh, we're here with Masa from BBL. I just want to, first of all, kind of understand what your guy's ideology is when you're putting together great builds for very demanding customers, <laughs> I guess would be the right term. Well, yeah, uh, you know, our first build as Built by Legends was an R32. And this one, well, it was natural for us to start an R33 project. And um, we happened to have a customer that wanted an R33 built by us with mines. So this is, this is the car that we built. Um, it's, it's a commissioned car. Uh, we built it, built it with uh, Mines and also Garage Yoshida, the same as uh, our first R32. Yeah. This is a bespoke project. So, you know, on the R32, uh, we had the ghost stripe and, it, you know, the, the build was really all subtle on the mm -hmm. outside. But this, this car customer really wanted the, the, the demo car look. Yeah. Uh, he wanted to pay homage to the original demo car that, was, that Mines had built back in the days. But it's... It's funny that when we started to build this car, it was difficult for us to find pictures or videos of that original R33. Yeah. So, you know, everything we really had to work with minds and try to... Pixelated uh, images. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And, you know, try to get the car correct and updated, of course. And I think what you've created is definitely, I guess, a step up mm -hmm. or a spec two version of what the 32 kind of represented, because of course it's got more power, it's got, far more interesting features. It's, it's a little bit more customized for the client, right? So. Yes, it is, it is. Uh, you know, of course the livery really tells uh, <laughs> what the car is about. Yeah. Uh, on this car, on the exterior, we have the, the carbon uh, bumper. The hood is also dry carbon and also the, the rear trunk and rear wing. Um, I said the bumper, but the bumper is similar to the R32. It's a one piece yeah. with the lip. And on this car, the rear trunk is also a one piece. It's a one piece together with the carbon trunk. And it's just yeah. painted, I mean, beautifully painted. Yes, by Garage Yoshida. Like amazing. And, and really the color cool. that we picked is the, uh, the green, which is the same as the, the real uh, Mines R34 sure. demo car. So basically this is a QX1 very, very kind of bluish white from the 34. Yes, yes it is. The heart of the build, I mean, the chassis alone is an amazing set of work, stripping it down, you know, getting rid of the old paint, strengthening it, straightening it out, and then repainting it, and then mine takes over the building yes. and creates this. All the chassis work and the body paint as well, of course, uh, was done by Garage Yoshida yeah. in Nara. And then uh, Nakayama-san takes over here at Mines. Yes, once the chassis is built, uh, or should I say um, restored, yeah. uh, it all comes up, the body is moved to, to here, and while we're doing the, the chassis work, Nakayama-san at Mines is you know, already working, yeah. building the engine for us. So once the chassis gets here, he pops in the engine. Yeah. And this engine is very special. Yeah, it's, it is based on a 2.8 liter kit from HKS. Yeah. But of course, Mines has their original parts in it. It is, um, it is set up to uh, comfortably output about 650 horsepower. Mm -hmm. um, and then the neat thing about this car in particular is that this car has a uh, Getlag six speed from an R34. Yeah. 
So it is actually the same setup as the, the Mines R34 so demo car. So the rear end stays R33, so exactly. you get the, the shorter final drive. Yes, yes. And you get that immediate yes. response and acceleration. Yes. So it's more about acceleration, you yeah. know, not too much about top speed, sure. which is uh, what Mines is all about. I'm mm -hmm. sure Nikura-san explained that that's the concept exactly, of Mines. Yeah. Uh, you know, responsiveness and acceleration balance is what they do. Yeah, I mean, I think what really surprises me is just the details that you guys nerd on. Like, you just <laughs> nerd out on the coolest stuff. Like, uh, this is kind of like a, a similar product to what you had on the 32, right? Yes, yes. And this is, this is actually uh, made, uh, the base is the mine's titanium right. strut tower bar. And then you have your bespoke build number. I mean, things like, like you recreated the, the stock plastic oil cap, but made it billet. You painted the top of the radiator, like even this is bespoke. Like it's just a work of art. Like even the carbon fiber radiator grill here, all the little panels with the bespoke, you know, vehicle information, chassis plate from Nakayama. And this is an M7, MB7? Yes, we call it the MB7. The engine that we have in the, the first R32 is an MB, MB5. Okay. So would this be the highest spec yes, that you guys offer? Yes. Okay. So 650 horsepower and uh, still that mind Reliable. character. And reliability, <laughs> of course. Speaking of nerding out, I mean, who would make this out of carbon fiber? <laughs> Crazy. To, ho to hold up another carbon fiber item here, which is, of course, a bespoke uh, carbon fiber hood with an ACA duct, kind of like the 34 V-Spec 2. Amazing. Like, how can you not love this? Can you tell me a little bit about the fabric that's being used? Yes, this was also requested by the, the customer yep. that we do all uh, inside, uh, renew all the inside. And the fabric that we we are using on this car is called Ultra Suede. Mm -hmm. People may not be familiar with the brand name, but it is actually the same as Alcantara. Okay. It's just the, the different naming. Right. Uh, it is actually manufactured by the same Japanese company called Tole. Mm -hmm. So we're right now working with Tole to, uh, we, we purchased the, the fabric from Tole, but we're working with Tole to uh, do a original design. Okay on these fabrics. So that would be coming up in, you know, the future cars that we'll build. build. Nice. So is, would that be something you would fit to the Civic, for example? For example. For example. But probably, okay. probably the other uh, builds, GTR. GTR. Yes. Well, I know you guys have started on the 34, so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I love how you started off with uh, Recaro uh, reclinable buckets. Yes, it's a SR3. SR3 to get that kind of modern. Or actually, it's a SR7. SR7, yes. okay. And uh, you've gone right across the dashboard here, again with the same fabric, black and, and the green, and this uh, beautiful uh, mind steering wheel. Like the details, like even down to the R34 shifter, custom painted, because usually, of course, this is uh, leather wrapped. This spoke all the way, right down to the dark chrome paint of the door handle and the lock release here. The green color, color theme on um, this car it comes from the, the green carbon. Yeah. Of course, from the mines car. You're bringing yes. that green inside. Yes. That's why the interior we're using green and then also the engine cover. Yeah. Uh, one thing that I really like is the, the dealer option Skyline logo on the glass, <laughs> which you guys left. That's so cool. And uh, yeah, you have the adjusters uh, for the Aragosta suspension. <laughs> move on to the handling, what you guys have done with the suspension, how you've uh, helped stiffen up mm -hmm. the original, uh, you know, suspension layout, the arms, the bushing, and your wheel choice, tire choice, brake choice, just run yeah. us through that the, quickly. The wheels are uh, raised 21A yep. wheels, uh, custom painted. The suspension is a, the mine's recommended Aragosta suspension. Okay. Uh, mind you that this car, although it does, you know, with the livery and all, 
Um, it is a street car. We are focused on building a street car. So the suspension setup, the brake setup is all uh, for street, maybe occasionally on track, but not a racing car. Yeah. So it's a, it's a fairly comfortable ride. Uh, the bushing has been changed to pillows. Mm -hmm. So you might expect it to be a little harsh, but it's not. The, susp the suspension is doing what it's supposed to, yeah. but uh, the handling is really, really quick. And uh, you know, I think most people would be thinking like, what would something like this be worth? How much would it take to, you know, if a customer comes to you with a 33, I mean, I know it's a bespoke build and you know, people have different requests, but approximate cost? Well, uh, it really depends on to what extent we do the build mm -hmm. and also the base car. Sure. This car was actually in very good condition oh, to so start with. So you actually with. sourced the car for the customer? This particular yeah. car, yes. Okay. We, we, we sourced it with mines. Nikura-san right. personally went to uh, get this car. Wow. Uh, but yeah, I mean, approximately somewhere around you know four hundred and fifty thousand yep. dollars to to do the the resto mod mm -hmm. from ch the chassis up i mean uh, and we're literally talking a ground up rebuild restoration yes, yes right down to bare metal uh -huh. i mean it, it's what a year in the making this car almost so, yeah i mean that that kind of figure is what i think i would have expected uh, these cars have become so valuable and also parts are so scarce and expensive and yes. on the rise continuously. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, totally makes sense, understandable in today's market. And as I said, this car was in good condition to start with, but yeah. our future builds will probably be based on a little more- Slightly rougher <laughs> as it gets harder car. to source. So we're still, we're already working on how to do, do what we do with uh, you know, a car with a little more mileage, a little mm -hmm. more wear. And uh, Garage Yoshida is, uh, we're partnering with Garage Yoshida to do the chassis. Cationic painting. Oh, wow. I have no idea what that is. <laughs> is that like a laser removal? No, no well, no, that, that's, that's the, uh, the painting that's, or pre-coat pre that's okay. done on production cars. Oh. Anti-rust pre-coat. Right. So that's, you know, when the chassis is really, really in mm. bad condition, we have to remove the rust you know, do all the restoration sure, yeah. and then do uh, anti-rust treatment, which sure. is, we'll be working on such projects in the, in future cars. That's crazy. I mean, you're, you're kind of future proofing it yeah. for, you know, usability. And one, one last question, has the chassis been reinforced or? Yes, it has, yeah? it has. Spot yes. welded or? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's one final touch that Nikura-san needs to do okay. here. Yeah. So he needs to sign the inside of the carbon trunk for the very lucky customer that has built this car. <laughs> and there it is. That has literally doubled the value of the car. Okay, so we've lifted the car up so we can kind of nerd out on the details here. And the first one is the mine's titanium exhaust, which was uh, redesigned and remade maybe two years ago. So it features a refreshed design for better sound and response, power, everything. And of course, totally road legal in Japan. It's uh, JASMA certified, so it'll pass your shock in without issues, provided you have a catalyst here. So. Uh, they run a sports catalyst uh, with all the emission data to support it, thus making it easy to pass the shock in. Uh, what makes uh, this car even more special is that it has the front titanium pipes, which of course just finish that mine's character, that really high-pitched wail um, that you get only with this exhaust. And initially it was what really uh, kind of attracted me to, to mines itself was the sound of the exhaust, which was unlike anything I heard back in the day, because you know, most people would put really open, really free flowing exhausts, which kind of make a really farty sound. I always preferred a more refined, more tuned kind of exhaust sound. So if you've heard a mines car, you'll know exactly what I mean. So under here, we can see that um, part of the complete 
package was to fit the R34 Getrag six-speed manual transmission, connected to the rear end with a carbon propeller shaft and onto the R33 rear end. So it maintains the, the stock final drive, which is exactly what the uh, Mines R34 had, um, which makes the gearing shorter. And of course, uh, kind of makes the acceleration more prompt and uh, faster. And that's what really made the R34 character so uh, unique back in the day. It was that immediate acceleration that you don't really get with the stock R34 final because it's very long. The BBL car runs the new Rays 21As. So these are kind of an inspiration to the old RE30s, if you remember those. And it's finished off in a custom dark silver metallic and it has the built by Legends logo right there. And of course, like every Mines car, uh, AP Racing brakes front and back. We have six spots here and uh, four pots here at the back. Again, with RDD two-piece slotted rotors. And tire of choice uh, is the Bridgestone Potenza RE71 RS, uh, fitted in 265-35R18. So very conservative sizing, uh, very old school uh, approach, the 265 is uh, a sizing that GTR tuners here in Japan have always run, uh, starting with Nismo and uh, Mines Midori. And they've, they've stuck with that uh, recipe. They don't want to add too much grip to introduce possibly too much understeer. They want to keep the, the car uh, lively. So under here, we see that the car runs Aragosta two-way adjustable uh, coilovers. Of course, this car, uh, like any BBL uh, complete package, complete car, starts off at Garage Yoshida down in Nara Prefecture, which is a very famous um, GTR specialist that uh, basically takes the car down to bare chassis, fixes it up, aligns it, gets everything perfect, adds uh, rigidity, um, spot welds it, and gets it painted and ready for the full assembly, which is uh, what Mines does here. So uh, we can kind of see how perfect it is under here. You can see all the, the coating underneath, all the new nuts and bolts and bushings. It's absolutely probably better, cleaner than when the car rolled out the production line back in uh, 1995. And since we have the car lifted here, we can actually see that this front lip is pretty much stock design. But if you notice, it's actually a one piece part with the bumper. So the bumper, the splitter is a one piece. It's just painted in the you know, legendary green hue mines clear coat. And the whole bumper made by Mooncraft is all dry carbon. They've even retained the amber uh, turn single signals. And if you think the car looks very bluish white, that's because it runs uh, the R34 QX1 white, which is definitely a very white white, if you could say that. Here's the Gary Yoshida sticker and all the partners. Okay, we can take a look here. It's very dark at the rear end. So we can see, uh, again, the Argosas. All the stock arms have been uh, cleaned up and repainted, powder coated. So th the arms say stock, but the bushing is actually Nismo. So it adds that extra little bit of rigidity and feedback to the arms and of course the subframe bushes. found a nice little spot along the bay here. With the statics done, I just wanted to uh, kind of talk about the driving you know, experience. I mean, obviously I didn't throw the car around the track. It was a very gentle drive to warm the engine up. And then a couple of accelerations here and then just to feel the power, but you know, you can really tell it has a, a very refined character in that the 2.8 really picks up super quick. The GCG Garrett based turbos spool up from just below 3000 RPM, giving like instant response all throughout the rev range. So up to about 8000 RPM. I think the red line is 8250. Obviously I didn't push it that high. This is not my car. And you know, 
a massive thank you to the owner who you know allows media guys like me to kind of play with these amazing builds and kind of experience it and just share that experience for everybody else to kind of understand just what makes these cars so so special beautiful thing i wish uh, i could throw this around the track and really uh, feel what that setup is all about i could really understand the whole kind of logic behind doing cars like this it feels factory fresh uh, it's so tight it feels like a brand new car super fun to throw around even though we probably did three corners a very well executed take on an R33 GTR.